general enough okay. degree. So. Oh, there's yeah, I think it's a little confusing. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, go ahead. I think that it's it. I think that it would really now that I think about it, throw. It would it would like undermine the freshman because you would be they kind of like hoodwinked because they're thinking okay I'll just stick with education right now and then as time goes on this, the pressure would mount up because they feel like they're racing against the clock okay. and because if they switched all of a sudden they feel like they've wasted all this time and they feel like they can't go back okay so um, this is what this is one of the interesting things about being at Austin P I was so curious to talk to students who are in a situation like that right and to say what's it like on um, the experience of it. And, um, and so actually, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into that. I'm actually looking for the Austin P speaker to talk mm -hmm. about the, but I didn't understand it until I saw students who were experiencing it. Um, and the things that I heard from them, and the stuff that we heard in the conversations with students around the state here, were, was the idea of um, guaranteed courses was really, I mean, so on, again, the implementation side, people said, well, how do we do that? How do we figure that out? We need help figuring that out. But students themselves said, boy, it would be great to know you know, that my classes are guaranteed, when they're guaranteed, it would also be great to kind of be able to explore in a way that would allow me to not accumulate excess credits um, and kind of change without penalty, right? So that I could kind of balance between knowing what I want to do and not really knowing what I want to do and find my path without adding a year or two years onto my degree. I feel like shifts the responsibility though from the student who decides to go to college yeah. to the the professors or the administration of that school to cater to the student. Interesting. Which I feel like they're already catering enough. Okay. So, so I know some of you have to go to classes and take tests the day after this, but any of you that are able to stay, I think it would be awesome if you could, if for those of you who can't stay, if you're able to, um, and your schedule permits it, because I think as the conversation unfolds, it's going to be very interesting to continue to talk to you guys about that. Okay, so the third one, and then we're moving on, uh, let's see, so, okay, um, this had to do with block scheduling and structured cohorts. So we asked, um, what if student schedules were organized into blocks? So for instance, students chose a pathway or broad major and then they pick a time block in every day when they take all of their classes five days a week, either, you know, so for example, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 1 to 5 p.m., for example. Um, and they would schedule, that would be their schedule semester after semester, all the way to gradu grad graduation day. And with their schedules more predictable, students would easily, uh, could more easily balance school with jobs. So when we asked this, this was the one that had the most interesting variance in opinion. Advisors said, students who have complicated lives who are working jobs, how many of you have had to work while you've been in school? Okay, um, that's less, that's fewer than the average, um, I think. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of advisors said that would be, that just wouldn't work for students who have super complicated lives um, to have that kind of rigidity. I think it would be problematic. Interestingly, the students, particularly the students, uh, the non-completers, um, those who had stopped out, um, uh, said, you know, actually that would really help me figure out the schedule. You know, I'd be able to plan my childcare, I'd be able to plan my job, I'd be able to, so there were really different attitudes about how it would be helpful or not helpful between advisors and students. So I'm curious what you guys, what you guys think about it. Again, I think it goes back to that power of choice as in, you know, we think that this would be great to be able to choose our schedule and have this variable every single semester. But again, if you do have a job or if you do have anything else, it kind of, it becomes difficult because, you know, if you have a class that you need to take and it's your very last class, and it's only offered at 5.30 on a Tuesday, you know, and you've got your kid's baseball game or whatever is five on Tuesday. It's just, I think having it a set schedule would be a great benefit. In the culinary program, we do have almost a set schedule um, or two days in a row for a specific number of hours. And it has been very beneficial as in, I can take on other positions, you know, volunteer positions and just different things that I've been able to do in school knowing that I'm going to have these classes on these two days, and that's when I'm going to have them. Okay. I think that would be good for, for especially from my perspective, for autistic kids. We need routine, and it, it's just good to know that it's predictable. But on the other hand, I think that it would be would be very stressful because of the students' attention spans. Because I was in a situation where I just recently studied abroad, and all our classes were four hours, and. What I found out is 
that your attention span can only go for like an hour and a half. And so by the time you're three hours in, you just feel like, I do not care. <laughs> and so it's just, it would be really, and so you're not really learning anything. It just goes in one ear and then out the other. I agree. Like on one hand, I think that having a block schedule here, like every day I have class from 8 to 12, and then I can work in the afternoons is great. But I love variance. I love having different schedules every day, and I love being able to go to a class and even just have 30 minutes before my next one to get a snack or to call someone or finish something up, do some emails. Like I like having something different every day. It makes my day more entertaining. Okay. What do you think, Zoe? I agree. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got a little bit of time here. Um, I want to actually open it up to others who have questions, either about the research or for the students. Um, anybody? And if you can just say who you are when you ask your question. Hi there, I'm Mark Land. I'm with Indiana University. Uh, I want to thank all of our students, especially for taking time today. Um, we had a question, and um, there's been the, the term unnecessary credits has come up several times already this morning. And I'm interested in your perspective on how much pressure you feel if you take a class that ultimately doesn't count towards your degree. Um, is that do you feel you know that that sets you behind in some way because you almost, you almost kind of get a feeling that some of these classes are just getting a bad rap if they don't, you know, they don't directly correlate to a degree. Okay. Um, I, there was one class that I took my freshman year, and I chose it, and I thought it, it was supposed to count. It was in like a certain, you know, you need so many arts and science credits, and it was within one of those. And it was the politics of food. And um, it's all about like just, you know, how the food pyramid is decided, and so lots of money from different companies going into that how food is processed and put around the U.S. Really interesting class. So when I found out that when I changed my major in December, that my specific major that wasn't one of the classes within the arts and science that would count, um, I was I was upset, but it was a class I ended up really enjoying and being glad I took. But if it had been a class that had been extra difficult or I had a bad professor or it hadn't been very interesting to me, then I think I would have really been bothered that I had not wasted, but spent so much time on that class when I could have been learning something else more pertaining to my major. For, for me personally, I mean, I value creativity and innovation, and I feel like if you stay stuck within just your major, and that's the only thing you're focused on, you're not as well-rounded as you can be. So just by, take, just by them giving us like electives or different classes where this really doesn't count towards your major, but it can benefit you you know, in the long run with maybe an idea or something you've never heard of or, you know, ever experienced. Um, like I took a music history class and I'm kind of like, oh, I learned some different things about music history. I mean, I love music too, but I mean, you know. Did it add time onto your degree or did it, did no, it, well, it was, it was hard your elective and yeah. you were able to. I mean, so what we, so one of the things that we heard from the transfer students was that they are told that their classes will transfer from Ivy Tech to IU regionals, for example, and technically they do. But they don't. They transfer only as electives, and students aren't told that. They're told, "Yes, your classes will transfer. Your classes will transfer." And then they get to the destination, you know, to the four year, and they find that, yeah, that class transfers, but only as an elective. And all of a sudden, they have another year um, that they didn't realize that they had. Um, and that's the thing that gets very frustrating and undermining for students in terms of losing time and money. At least that's what we have heard from students around the state. That's exactly yeah, I, okay. I just I met recently with the IUPUI and finding out that, again, all of my, trans, my credits are only, you know, I can only transfer so many, which I have more than what they, you know, I technically need for that. And they're, you know, they only transfer a specific amount and then they all go to electives. So I'm full in one area and not full in another. And if I would have known that, the little elective courses that I could have had here, I would have changed. I would have completely done different. So, you know, that was that, and that's no one's fault. I think it's just basically, uh, you know, if I would have went, and that's a lot of changes too, a lot yeah. of changes between programs and what IUPUI has required from Ivy Tech, and these are even recent, you know, okay. for this semester, so. So other questions, we have four minutes here. Anybody, another question for our students about the research? How 
Um, Vinny Vincent, I, or Indiana University of Kokomo. I have a question. Um, one thing that I wrote down um, in my notes, just from listening uh, with you, was the common theme that I heard from all four of you was your motivation. You felt motivated, you felt compelled to take action and take charge of your academics, which I want to commend you all on. Um, for that student that maybe doesn't have that motivation or that drive, are there any advices that you can give us to help those, those students find that motivation? Um, I know for, um, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Mike. In the, well, Jordan. Oh, Jordan. there you go, Jordan. I know you said your motivation kind of right out of the gate was your father. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the students in your situation and whatnot don't have that motivation from the parent. But is there anything that you would say to us that we could then help those students that need that motivation to find that voice to kind of take that active part in their education to own it and to work with them? I think that if they're starting college, then that means they see college as some type of importance even if they don't have a lot of motivation. And I think um, trying to express through programs and advisors and professors to the students how important it is not to just end up with a degree, but to end up with a good GPA. Because when you go into the work field, it is hard to get a job and everything is compared. So GPAs, I know a lot of people are very content with a very average or below average GPA because they don't think they need anything higher, but it's so competitive. <laughs> or if you want to end up going to grad school, you need to learn as much as possible so that you are ready to take the GRE or whatever test you have to take and to get into grad school because that's extremely competitive too. So just letting them know that it's not just about getting a degree, it's really about how well you do within your degree because you're competing with every single person that's getting it. I think that part of it is that one thing that is, is a you people builder, what I mean by that is trying to take the extra time to, like I said, get to know who you have under your under your wing, so to speak, and just find out what their interests are and encourage them to fall into that because when they fall into something like communication or media or something like that, like for me it's Spanish and I don't consider it a job. I consider it something that I'm really enjoying and it makes learning, a, getting a degree, not something like a job. It makes it fun. Okay. Um, for myself, there, there are two main contests, I would say, that drive my motivation. One is I'm spending money on this. So, <laughs> to, like, seriously, I'm spending money on this. And sometimes that does depend on your background. I mean, for me, I come from a, a family that had a lot of money. So, obviously, I'm applying for loans. I'm doing this stuff. These are loans I have to pay back. Motivation. I need to, I need to do this. Like, and i got to do this the right way. And I, I need to get this done. Secondly, um, I would say that just the main question, why am I in college? Why are you in college? That should be motivation enough if you ask yourself that. And what, what your answer is should be your motivation for you know completing your degree. Well, uh, I'm going to be the oddball here. And sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just cannot motivate people to do something that they don't want to do. I lead a student organization where I want students to have this avenue, this outlet, and this networking. And I'll, I'll conduct meetings and people don't show up. So I can't do anything about the people that don't come. However, the people that do come and don't really understand and don't really know, I take the time to find out their passion. What avenue do you want to go in this field? And then I take that time and link that person to a professional in the organization. So I guess finding out you know, what their, their deeper issues are and what they really want to do. But sometimes you just can't, and I hate to say that, but you cannot be something that people aren't ready for. And that's okay too. Okay. You know, just show up and do what you can do for those that want it. Can I mention one more thing? Yeah. I think that motivation is important because they're, like, make them aware of the fact that there are all kinds of students that go and get a degree and do not get a job. And so you have to work really hard to get internships to take advantage of the full college opportunity. And then there are kids who never go to college but have so much motivation that they are really successful in the work field. So it really comes down to like how hard you're willing to work and a degree is not gonna be the sole thing that gets you to the career that you want. So I think that brings us to the end of our time. I want to thank you. I know Zenobia at least has an exam today. And <laughs> um, so if you guys could join me in thanking the students.